Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Discovery Church Online. Today, we're diving into part three of our Ghosts of Christmas Past series, where our senior pastor, Jason Hanish, will be showing us how to look at the labels we've taken on that cause us to limit our life and potential, and how we can break free from the past and knowing who we are in Christ. Hey, welcome to Discovery Church. Hey, I'm glad that you are here today to join us for the final installment of our Ghosts of Christmas Past series. Before I get into that, let me just kind of give you a, a few announcements because Christmas is fast approaching and you may not like it, whether you like it or not. The new year is right around the corner as well. 2018 is like right here. So a couple important things, you guys. Next Sunday is Christmas Eve. Get the shopping done. If you haven't already, you're just, you're out of luck, man. It just, I feel sorry for you. But we got a service for you on the Christmas at Discovery is Christmas Eve. Sunday, December 24th, so come to one of those six services. I hope you're excited about this. Man, we have an awesome Christmas candlelight experience for you guys. It's going to be very powerful. Invite your friends, invite your family. We give you guys those invite cards, those circle things. Um, someone actually, last week, they, they said that they took a few of them, they had them in their purse, and when they were just talking to someone, it just church came up, and they said, oh yeah, I got an invite card, and they were able to just take it out and say, hey, join me at Discovery. So, Keep those on you. You never know when God will cross someone by your path that, that doesn't know Christ or maybe not have a church. So grab some of those. Join us at one of our services. They're all the same. They're the same service, same candlelight, same message, same carols, same kind of specials and unique things that we're going to do every service. Or whether you kind of are, would like to come in the morning and have the Christmas rest of the eve, Christmas day, or do Christmas Eve stuff with your family all day and then come to one of the evening services, we got you covered. Also, um, the new year is just upon us, and don't miss the, the week after that, December 31st, um, we'll be kicking off a new series. Tell you more about that in, in later in the future, but we're going to begin the year, as always here at Discovery, with 21 days of prayer and fasting. It's kind of our tithe of our time and our year to God in response to God's call, really, in Second Chronicles 7, where he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, then I will heal he says forgive their sins and heal their land so so this is just a t we've done this every year it's a bedrock thing we do it at the beginning of the year and towards the fall of the year in august 21 days of prayer and fasting and more information on that coming and online if you're kind of new to the christ following thing and church thing and want more information about prayer especially fasting a lot of people don't kind of uh, understand that uh and it's maybe a lost art of of Christian discipline, um, but it's something that we truly believe in here that, that will add a lot of value to your walk with Christ. So if you go online, I have some messages that I preached and taught about fasting. You can go online, listen to those. We have other resources, links to other resources, what kinds of fasts that you can do and how you can kind of participate and, and focus in on the first 21 days and, and the new series that I'll be doing will help you do that as well and prepare you for an amazing year. Um, the 21 days of prayer and fasting, I kind of want to give it to you a little bit ahead because if you're like me, I have to prepare for the fast. I have to start weaning myself off stuff so that I don't have a terrible fast experience. So, so that is, I'm just trying to give you fair warning. Prepare yourself for, for a, a fast, and we'll talk more about that and what that looks like. We've been in this series, Ghosts of Christmas Past, for two weeks. It's a three-week series. It's leading us into Christmas Sunday. And what we're basically talking about here is, is, is possibly... Um, there are things in your past and our past that can just routinely, every now and then, just come back up, can haunt you, can, can hurt you again, even though they're not present, but begin to inflict wound and hurt you by the memories of those things, to paralyze you, and really it's a tool of the enemy to paralyze you, to immobilize you from living the life that God has called you to live. And so today, um, I think I, this message... That, that I'm bringing has, has a, a great potential to bring a lot of healing in this area of your life, in the area of your identity. Because what we're going to talk about today has to do with the labels of our life, the labels that we kind of, um, that bind us. And how do we overcome the labels that we wrongly believe about ourselves? Those things that we believe in the, from the past that just come out. And so what, what's a label? A label is a soul tattoo, 
that, we, that, that gets deeply engraved into our hearts, so much so that we believe that it's true. We believe this, this lie about our life, and it affects the way that we, we react, and it affects the way that we live, and it, and, it gives us, and it brings us into spiritual bondage. But today, I'm, I'm declaring, I believe, by the power of God's word, that Jesus today wants to give you new labels free of charge that are based on his truth and in his word that has the power to set you free that there is new labels for you so to kind of start this off i i need to i'd like to talk to you first about the power of words the power of of the words and the labels and the things that we're declaring and saying there is so much you guys know there is power in your words there is your words have creative power they have power to shape things they have they have power to create things they have power to influence things they have power to bring momentum and motivation and influence in our lives but on the on the flip side of that they also have a negative power don't they they have the power to wound they have the power to hurt they have the power to diminish and even to destroy words have power and you you may have heard or maybe even you even said or heard someone say like oh there it's just words don't it's just words they're meaningless it's just words or or the the one of the dumbest sayings ever probably sticks and stones may break my bones but words may never hurt me you are a liar okay you, that, come on that words hurt don't they words they brand us and they they we kind of have this tendency sometimes when when words are spoken over and over and over and over into our lives to internalize those and believe that they're true why? Because the Proverbs actually tells us, Proverbs 18, 21, that the tongue, words, has the power of life and death. They have that shaping power that after you hear them over and over and over again, you start to believe that it's true. Um, but let's call it what it is, you guys. There, there are many of us who struggle in this moment because of labels that we've wrongly owned with things that happen in our past. Someone has said something to you, has, did something to you, and uh, wrong, that you've kind of like wrongly owned, and, and, and maybe they belittled you, maybe they made you feel less than, maybe, maybe they called you a name, and you kind of just kind of took that on as part of your identity, so you owned that, maybe it was a mistake you even made, and you own that action now as part of who you are, like your identity with something that you did. And I don't know what label uh, that you might be walking around with and the, and the wrong labels that have been spoken into your life. Like maybe someone called you lazy or, or you're you know, just a lazy person or you're just an average person. You're going to be an average, you're an average student. You're never really going to amount to anything. You're not going to really make a difference. And someone spoke those things. Oh, you're just insecure. Hey, why are you always so insecure? You're just, you're just such an insecure person. Or you're just, why are you such a hothead? You're just always so angry. You're just, you just lose your temper all the time. Why are you so sensitive? You're just overly sensitive, you know? And, and, and just they belittled you. You're annoying. Why are you so annoying? Oh, you're so pathetic, man. What's the, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? And you hear these things over and over again. And then, oh, you're bad. Why are you so bad at relationships? You're always, man, you're always messing up. And then some of you, you might have owned the idea, even like, like your family is dysfunctional. Oh, my family is just so dysfunctional. We always deal with this. We never have good Christmas. We never can have that good Christmas, like the story book or the movie Christmas. Man, we're kind of, we're just dysfunctional. We fight all the time. You've owned these labels and they're diminishing you and let's be honest here about about labels you guys because sometimes when you internalize a negative label there might be some truth to it right in other words um if someone says you're a lazy person and you own that label you might not actually be the most motivated person on the planet earth right you might you just you might not be there might be some truth to that when someone called you a hot head or why are you so hot-headed you might lose your anger a little bit more than the average, you know, person. There's, there's, a, there's a little bit of truth to that, and, and that, that might be some truth to the label that you've embraced today, but here's what I hope that you will understand. What's true, listen, what's true about you today does not need to be true about you forever. Okay, please listen to this, receive this, believe this, let this kind of internalize within you, what is true about you in this moment? What is true about you today does not have to be true about you 
forever. God's power is bigger than your past. His grace is stronger than the label than anyone would ever put on you. What's true about you now does not have to be true about you later. And if you've embraced some hurtful, negative label that is paralyzing you, that holds you back, that kind of pushes you down, that tells you that you are less than, then this message is for you. That God has something to say to you. And I want to show you a story out of the Old Testament. Um, it's really a love story of Jacob and Rachel. And some of you know, know this story. This is a beautiful love story. Jacob sees Rachel and he just fall. It was like a love at first sight kind of kind of thing. And and you guys know the story. He works fourteen years for this woman so that he could marry her. But but it, you know she had a sister. I want you to just kind of paint the picture. It's not in your notes, but let me paint the picture for you. Genesis chapter twenty nine verse seventeen. It says this about Rachel and her sister Leah. It says Rachel had a beautiful figure and a lovely face. But look what it says about Leah. There was no sparkle in Leah's eye. How tough is that, man? That's hard. The Bible is harsh. Sometimes it just is. It's like, you know, Rachel's got she's got it going on. She's got a good figure and stuff. And and Leah's got a good personality. That's what it said in the Greek. In the Greek, that's what it said. Right? OK, anyway, this is what he's dealing with here. Back to the text. For years, for years, Jacob and, Leah, and, and Rachel are trying to conceive. And Ra- this is eating Rachel up. And because and, she cannot give Jacob sons and a lineage and a legacy. And she's looking at Leah. Leah's having all these kids. And, 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 and they're, they're trying, but they're failing and failing. It's not happening. And eventually they, they do. They have their, their, their first kid. And man, they, they celebrate that. She's so happy. She says, let's try again. Come on, Jacob, let's try again. And the second pregnancy does not go well. Something tragic happens in the middle of that pregnancy. And we don't really know what it was. They didn't have like emergency procedures like we have today, like C-sections and stuff like that. But something tragic happened. Um, and this second pregnancy that changed their lives forever. Let's look at it. Genesis chapter 35, picking up verse 16. It says, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. And as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, don't despair, for you have another son. So there's some good news. I know, I, I know this isn't looking good, the pregnancy, but there's good news. It's a son. You got, you got a boy. As she breathed her last, for she was dying. She was dying here in labor. She named her son Ben-Oni, but his father renamed him Benjamin. Names are so important. For those of you that are having children or thinking about having children or going to have some more children, think about the names that you are giving. The names today are just creative. You know what I mean? I'm just going to say creative. Got some creative, like Jason and Veronica. Those names, those are boring now. I don't know one named Jason or Veronica. It's there's they're just off the wall creative. I looked up the last couple of years the creative names. Let me show you a few of them. Unusual boy names. Um, look at this one, Bobo. Come on, man. This kid has got like one career path. That's it. You done did it. It's Bobo. Come on. Here's another one, Falcon. Pharaoh. What? Um, Blade, I mean, this kid's going to get a tattoo at 16, okay? You just, you basically just, there it is, Blade. What's your name, Blade? Laser face. No, so, (laughs) unusual girl, here's some unusual girl names. Birdie. How about Fruity? Here, Fruity, Fruity. Fruity, Fruity, come on, Fruity, Fruity. How about this one, Messiah? Oh, good luck living up to that one, dear. Messiah. I mean, they're, they're creative, but names have power. Rachel, as she's, she's breathing her last breath, she's thinking, her heart is breaking. Here she's having another son, and she will never see her son grow up. She will never see her son take first steps. She'll never be able to feed her own son from herself. She, she's not going to see him grow up to the man that God destined him to be and get married and have kids, and she's thinking all these things, and she says, His name is Benoni. Write this down. Write this down. Because Benoni means son of my sorrow. That's what his name is. His name, she says, is son. Think about that. That Rachel, she's she's grieving, but she's not the only one grieving, is she? Who else is grieving? Jacob is grieving. The man who worked 14 years for the woman uh, he loved. 
his best friend and partner in life, the person he struggled with, he's fought with, that they finally are having kids now with. His heart is breaking in the midst of this. He's losing the love of his life. His, his love. He's, he's, his heart is breaking, and he hears her final words as she's breathing her last. His name will be Son of my sorrow. And Jacob goes, no, 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 no. That's, that's, that, that can't be it, because his, what's true of him now does not need to be true of him forever. Are you hearing me? What's true of him now does not need to be true of him forever. His name shall be Benjamin, son of my right hand. That's what his name means. For those of you that don't know Old Testament history, the right hand is the sign of blessing. It's a symbol of blessing. And he's saying, what the enemy meant for harm, I'm going to find good. What others call a curse, I'm going to call a blessing. What others call sorrow, I'm going to call a blessing from God. I don't like the label. If you don't like the label that you've been given, listen, call it something else. Name it something different. Let the Father in heaven take what your enemy has called you and name it something different. She said, this is son of my sorrow. And Jacob said, no, 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 not forever. He is the blessing of God. He is a blessing. See, when Jacob, he actually has experience in God able to rename things, doesn't he? You guys know the story. Jacob was actually wrestling with God one day. And he was wrestling with him so long, night, morning came, and he, he's wrestling with God. God's like, let me go. And he says, not until you bless me. You guys remember the story? And, and, and God tells Jacob, he says, no longer will you be called, will you be named Jacob, which means one who deceives, a deceiver. And Jacob actually owned that label. Jacob was a liar, a manipulative person. That's who he was in that present. Listen, as God began to speak and rename Jacob, he still was liar and manipulative. He still was. But, but God says, I'm speaking into your present. No longer will you be called Jacob. No longer will you be known as a deceiver. But I am calling you Israel, which means my God prevails. Look, see, when God speaks into your life, he doesn't speak to your past. He speaks to your potential. God does not speak into your, your pain, or he doesn't identify you by your pain of your past. He identifies you by your purpose. That's what he does. So God has, Jacob has experience in this whole renaming thing. And this, the truth is, write this down. If you've been carrying around a negative label, if you've been, if you have a soul tattoo, if you've been labeling yourself with something that is inconsistent with the way God sees you. Listen, call it something different. You need to name it something different. At the core of what I am intending to do today is to teach you how to have a prophetic ministry over your life. Okay? And, and I know some of you are scared and are freaked out about that. Just listen. Just listen. What, 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 what I'm basically saying is, what, when you prophesy, when you, when you name it something different, what you are doing is you're speaking divine truths into your life and rejecting the lies of the enemy. That's what it means to prophesy, to speak divine truth, not current circumstances. Oh, I know, but this is, this is the current state. But what's true of you now does not need to be true of you forever. Are you hearing me? Okay, so if you've, if you've internalized a negative label, if you have, if you have, assume something into and as a part of your life that is inconsistent with the way God sees you, then you need to label it something different. So then the question then becomes like, how does God see me? Okay, if, I, if I'm going to rename, if I'm going to relabel myself, then and, and even identify those areas that may be engraved so much in my heart, I've just kind of assumed it as life as usual, then how does God see me? Great question. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 9, Peter tells us how God sees you. Peter tells us what your identity is, your God-given identity. Look at it, Isaiah, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 says this. You are, he's talking about your identity here, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. What do those mean? Those are so important. I'm going to teach them to you in a moment. Every single one of those are significant. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people. In other words, you didn't have an identity. You were searching for one. You were wandering. You were confused. But now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now 
you have received mercy. So if I'm going to defeat the ghosts of Christmas past, these labels that continue just routinely in life, just come back up to haunt you, to diminish you, to pull you down, to hold you back, and to speak things and assume things that are not consistent with what God sees in you. What does God see in you? Write these down. This is so important. It's so important to defeat the ghosts of Christmas past. Number one, this is how God sees you. Number one, I am completely accepted. All these statements start with I am. I need you, to, I need you to just to buy into some new truths today. Start to speak these into your life. I am completely accepted. This is so vital for you to know in your life because we all have wounds. And some of the deepest wounds in our life come from rejection. Come from, and some of us are walking around with this label that I'm unwanted, rejected, discarded, damaged goods. And we're walking around with a far, false label from these deep wounds of rejection. And some of us, some of us feel less than. And it comes from a lot of different, it can come from your family, it can come from your office place, it can come from your school situation. You could be rejected by a friend, you could be rejected by someone that you loved and that you trusted. But rejection causes a deep wound. And out of that, we try to solve that, that wound. By finding acceptance. We ch- so we chase after acceptance. And the problem is we start chasing after it in all the wrong areas. We chase after acceptance in the wrong places. And many times we kind of base it on how well we're doing rather than starting with what God has said about us. So, I mean, we do some crazy things just to earn acceptance, don't we? It influences so much of our life. It influences where you live, what kind of car you drive, how you talk, how you walk. Some of you, I've seen it. How you dress, how you, it just, it influences, it influences so much in your life. It's like, it's like, as, as I know, I, as a kid, I know I was so, I was so searching for acceptance, man, I would jump off cliffs and roofs and do the craziest, the craziest things just for acceptance. Your, did your mom ever tell you if, if your friend walked off a cliff, would you? I actually did. I did that. I I was that idiot who did and tried to. And some of you are here in the same boat. You did some crazy things just to try to earn acceptance. Have you ever looked at pictures? Like from those of you that that lived in the 70s, have you ever looked at pictures like back then when you were, or maybe some of you haven't lived in the 70s and you look at pictures back like, oh my gosh, what were they doing? What was I doing? What were they doing? Everyone was doing it. That's what we were doing. Everyone, everyone was doing it. And we just wanted to be accepted. So that's the way, that's the way people looked. And, and to, be, to be, you know, not chosen for something is, is a, it's a hard thing. It's like to be not chosen or rejected, it, it, it will do anything, almost anything for acceptance in our life because the pain of being not chosen is so great, you know, to be looked over. I remember in fifth grade, true story, fifth grade, I, I asked a girl to go out with me on the playground um, but I, ha- I, asked the, I asked her friend to go tell her. We, did, we used to do it by correspondence back then. We, we, did, we asked people out by correspondence. And then, and then when you were going out, you, nothing really changed. It was just correspondence. You know, we just still communicate the correspondence. Anyway, things changed so much. But in fifth grade, I, I, I asked her, her, her friend, you know, you know, hey, can you ask her, you know, if, if she'll be my girlfriend? So, so she goes and asks, and she comes back. And this is no joke. I'm, I'm telling you the truth here. She comes back, and she says, she said, my mama said to say no to drugs. <laughs> Dagger to the heart. I was like, oh, crush me. It wounded me. I'm, telling you, I'm like, I'm never going to ask a girl out again in my life. Like, this was so devastating to me. Like, like, it was like a week went by, and I was just, I was, I mean, uh, seriously, it, it ate me up until I asked her best friend out. She said yes. But anyway, I, I'm just, you know, I will show her, you know what I'm saying? Um, don't do that, kids. Don't do that. But anyway, the, some of you feel the pain of, of rejection. Like, like you remember like when they were getting picked for school and stuff and, 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 and for the sports thing, and you're like kicking around. You're like, please don't be with me last. Please, please don't pick me last. And, and I just pick me second to last. Well, I'm not last. And you were last anyway or something. And you wear that rejection. And you wear that label still to this day. It is haunting you and hurting you. Being chosen, though, the flip side of that is a good thing. It doesn't feel so good to be chosen by someone you love. 
It doesn't feel good to get that promotion, to get that reward. Even, even if someone is just giving you the affirmation, dude, like, you did such a great job. Doesn't that feel great? I got good news for you. You don't have to chase after acceptance for the rest of your life because God gives it to you freely. That's what the Bible says. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You have been chosen by God himself. That's where you start. That is the truth about you. Hey, I know, I don't care if you feel it or not, that you feel like you're chosen or not. In Christ, that is the truth about you. You need to remove the old labels of rejection, the old label of disapproval. Before everything, God chose you. That's what the Bible says. Check this out. Ephesians 1.4 it says, God chose us in him. Look at this. Before the creation of of the world. I want you to just think about that. Let that rock you for a little bit. Let, let that just, just, just blow your mind. Before everything, Christ chose you. God chose you in Christ. Before God chose to make the oceans, he chose you. Before God chose to speak the sun bursting into existence, he chose you. Before he chose to make the planet that you stand on, he chose you. Before he spoke the solar systems and galaxies and stars into existence, he chose to love you. That, that's worth pausing for a moment and being amazed by the love of God, by the acceptance of God. Look what Titus 3, 7 says. Jesus treated us much better than we deserve. He made us acceptable. He made us acceptable to God and gave us the hope of eternal life. That's where your acceptance comes from. If you're trying to get acceptance from God, like you try to get acceptance from everybody else in your life, chasing after it, trying to earn it, you're never going to get it because God only gives it as a gift. You, can, you cannot earn or perform your way into acceptance with God. You, it is a gift of God that he gives only freely. That's where your identity starts. Knowing, realizing, I am completely accepted by God. The second thing Peter says about who you are, how God sees you is this. Write it down. Receive this. I am extremely valuable. This is even better than acceptance. I mean, we all want to be accepted, don't we? But what we want even more than acceptance, we want to be valued. We want, we want, to, be, we want to be valued. God says, I don't just accept you. I value, I don't just completely accept you. I extremely value. In fact, you are priceless to me, he says. 1 Peter 2, 9, this is Peter's second description of your identity. He says, You're, you are a holy nation, a people belonging to God. You're holy. That's what he says. What does that mean, holy? That means to be separated. It means you're valuable. When you talk about the holy Bible, when you talk about the holy land, when you talk about the holy city or the holy of holies, anything that is holy is considered more than normal. Above normal, it is unusual. It is extremely valuable. God says, your identity to me is you're holy. That's who you are. That's your identity. You are, you are separated for me as special. Deuteronomy 7, 6 says, you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Look at this. His treasured possession. God tre Do you know that God doesn't look at you and go, oh, no, I created him? What was I thinking? Oh, dang, if I would have known, he was, oh, dang it, man. I Did you know that God doesn't know when God looks at you, he sees his treasured possession. Nobody values you more than God. Nobody. Isaiah 43 says, God says, you are precious to me. Hey, I don't know, I don't know if ever, anyone has ever called you precious. I don't know if, if your parents called you precious, but please listen. God says, you are precious to me, my child. You are extremely valuable. That is your identity in Christ. Here's the third thing Peter says. Receive it. Write it down. I am eternally loved. I am eternally loved. I'm not only completely accepted, extremely valued, but I am eternally loved. That's the third thing Peter says about your identity. Verse 10, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you didn't have an identity, but now you, you are the people. This has such profound implications to be the people of God. Because God says, hey, now you used to not be, but now you're in my family. 
And I'm not ashamed of my family. I mean, in, in human terms, we, we're ashamed of some people in our family, right? Those weird, I mean, you got the weird uncle, the weird aunt, anyone like that. Don't look at them right now if they're here, but, but you know what I'm talking about. You can be ashamed of some people in the family, but God is, God is saying, I will never, never, never be ashamed of you. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, I will never, you're in my family, and I will never be ashamed of you. Jeremiah 31 says, about God says, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With an unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. There's two characteristics of God's love that you need to memorize, you need to know. Because anytime you forget these characteristics about God's love, you will label yourself differently. You will start to see yourself differently and start to assume different labels. Whenever you, don't, whenever you forget these, this about God and His love, you'll end up trying to perform His, getting this performance mentality. Two things about God's love. One, it's unconditional. Two, it's unfailing. It's unconditional and it's unfailing. He says, I have loved you everlasting and unfailing. Some people are walking around with the label of unwanted unloved, damaged goods, and that is not who you really are. God's love for you is unconditional. That, that means not, not, I love you if you pray. I love you if you read your Bible. I love you if you go to church. I love you if you tithe. I love you if you're a nice person. I love you if you serve and, you know, give to the poor. No, I love you period. That's what he says. I love you, period. In fact, the unconditional love of God, he says, I love you in spite of you. I love you. And this is, look, some some of you are here today, and you are sensing yourself get further and further away from God because you've assumed a certain label. You're buying into, listen, because what's true for you right now, you may be getting caught up in something. You may, be, you, you may be getting caught up in a sin, caught up in a lifestyle. Something is haunting you back again. And listen, what's true for you now is not true for you in the future. But because you're buying into it and you're assuming that label and you're identifying yourself with the actions that you are committing, you sense in your heart, I can sense it. You sense in your heart there's distance between you and God. You feel yourself drifting further and further away from God, from his love. Can I tell you something? God hasn't gone anywhere. God's love has not changed one bit for you. Someone needs to receive this, please. God loves you. His love is unending and unfailing. There is nothing you can do that can escape from God's love. Listen, this is what you need. What you need to do is choose, start choose to worship the one true God. And I'm not making, I'm not trivializing, you know, what your, your, your stronghold and the label that is binding you. I'm not saying that the struggle is not real. I understand there's a struggle. But what you need to do today is do everything that you can to make sure that the one true God is who you will worship and give your life to. Because God God hasn't gone anywhere. His love for you is unending and unfailing. It is constant. He loves you, period, no matter what you've done. Hey, what may, it may be true for you, you today, but it doesn't need to be true of you forever. You need to reject that label. Reject that label. That lie of the enemy that wants to destroy you, diminish you, and push you down and start speaking life into yourself again. Here's the fourth thing. The fourth, the fourth part of your identity. Someone needs to receive this one today. I am totally forgiven. I am totally forgiven. First Peter chapter 2, verse 10 says it this way. At one time, you didn't know God's mercy, but now you know You didn't know, but now you know, right? (laughs) But now you have received His mercy. God's mercy has given us God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness is total. God's forgiveness is complete. God's forgiveness means everything. God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is timeless. He knows He's the beginning and the end. He knows it all. So His forgiveness has to be total. Think about the implication of that, you guys, what that means. That means that God knows the worst thing that you've ever done, and he knows the worst thing that you ever will do, and he's chosen in advance to forgive you for it. Listen, you may be surprised. We may get surprised at some of the dumb things that we do. 
some of the dumb things that we say, some decisions and choices we make. Dang it, can I blow your mind here today? God is never surprised. You never surprise God with, the, with those choices you make and the missteps. you. God didn't go, ah, oh, dang it, he did it again. Man, shoot, I, I wish he would. No, God is not, he's not surprised. Why? Because he's chosen to forgive you in advance. It is your label. It is your identity. And see, some of you are drifting from God because when you're in it, you own it. Don't own it. Call it something different. Oh, my goodness. Call it something different. I am totally forgiven. We have a hard time understanding this because we don't do this. I mean, even in our human forgiveness, some of us are pretty good at forgiving, and you still don't do it. I mean, even at the, we, we don't really totally forgive like God totally forgives. We just reserve judgment for a later date, right? Okay, so we say, okay, I forgive you. And then what do you do? You put it in a shoebox, and you go put it in the closet up there on that shelf in the closet, and you just, you lock it away until... Something happens again, and you go run to that closet. You get that shoebox. You say, aha, see, you, uh, and that's what you do, right? That's what you do. But that's not God's forgiveness. God says, I choose to forget your sin, to wipe it off the face of the earth, to cleanse it. It is not even remembered anymore. The old is gone. A new thing has come. God's forgiveness is is total some of you need to need to remove the label of blame and accusation and condemnation that you're walking listen receive it what's true for you now is not true for you forever it's not true for you tomorrow it is not who you are in christ this is who you are romans 8 and 1 says there now is no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus he's a forgiving god that's who he is he is the god who forgives look at isaiah 43 25 He says, I am the God who forgives your sins. And I do this not because you deserve it, not because you've earned it, not because you worked hard enough and you finally learned your lesson and boy, you made it, you did it. No, he says, I do this because of who I am. See, it's not who, about who you are. That's not how you are forgiven. You're not forgiven based on your performance, based on who you are or what you do. God says you are forgiven based on who I am. I am a forgiving God. And look at this. I will not even hold those choices, those mistakes, those sins, past, present, future against you. Wow. I am totally forgiven. That is who you are. In Christ, that is your identity. Here's the fifth fifth part of your identity. You need to know. You need to know how God sees you. Because some of you are walking around with the wrong labels, and they are holding you back. They are pulling you down. Here's the last thing. God says, I am fully capable. Man, I am fully capable. They, They told me I wasn't enough. They told me I wasn't good enough. They told me I didn't deserve it. They told me I was average. They told me I would never amount. They told me, they told me. God says, I am equipped for every good work. God says, I am fully capable. God says, I am more than a conqueror in Christ. I am fully capable. That's how God sees me. Look at verse 9 of Peter. He says, you are royal priests. I'm going to come back to that and explain that. Chosen to tell about the wonderful acts of God who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This Peter is writing this letter to you, the church. He's not writing to a select group of people, like leaders and pastors. and No, no, no. He's writing to you. He says, you are a priest. Look, listen, if, you're a, if you are born again, born again, if you're a Christian, you're a follower of Christ, God says you're a priest. A lot of you didn't know that. God, this is, this is one of the reasons why we don't need to go to a priest to make confession and get forgiveness of our sins anymore is because I am a priest. I don't need to go. No, I have direct access to God. What does a priest do? A priest has two functions. A priest represents God to people, and he represents people to God. And God says, hey, you're fully capable of doing that. No, you don't have to have a special office. You don't have to have a special calling. No, it's who you are. Your identity to me is you are a royal priesthood. You are fully capable to be a servant of God and make a difference for God. Look, listen, sometimes we don't feel that way. I know. Sometimes you don't feel, you feel less than. You feel like it's a burden. You feel like it's, it's too much for you to handle. You can't handle it on your own. You were never meant to handle it on your own. God says, I have made you 
capable of serving me and making a difference. Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe your feelings? Or are you going to believe God? Are you going to believe the lie? Or are you going to believe His Word, His truth? 2 Corinthians 3 says, The capacity we have comes from, look at this, comes from God. It didn't even come from you. It doesn't come from your education. It doesn't come from your talent. It doesn't come from your... It comes from God. It is He who made us. He made us capable of serving the new covenant. You say, oh, I can never serve in my church. Why? You calling God a liar? Oh, I can never make a difference. You call, why? You calling God a liar? God says that's your identity. You are a difference maker. You are a royal priesthood. You are called out of darkness into his wonderful light. Not only that, but called to proclaim his wonderful light. Some of you got the labels of clumsy or ignorant or incompetent. Today, I don't, I don't know what your label is today. Write this down, your last fill in. And then, and then I put some blanks in there for you. Write this down. I am relabeled. I am relabeled. I don't know what your label is, but I, I, I want you in these blanks to do something between you and God because you may, you, you may today have come in with a soul tattoo. If you don't like what you've been called, prophesy something different. Name it something different. Someone has called you insecure and you've been walking around with that label for way too long. That this label of insecurity. No, no, no. I am confident in Christ. I have everything in Christ. I need to do everything he's called me to do. Call it something else. Well, someone called oh, call me lazy. I am a little bit of a lazy person. No, actually, I'm being transformed into his image. I am motivated to fulfill the divine purpose of my I wake up every day ready to use the gifts and make a difference for Jesus Christ. Name it something different. Oh, I'm just miserable. I'm always depressed. No, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I call it something else, and you're going to grow into believing it. I'm going to confess what God says is true about me and reject the lies. Don't embrace the false labels that will diminish you. Our enemy is a liar. He's the father of lies, and what he wants to do is just get you to tell you over and over and over what you're not, that you're not good enough, that you're pathetic, you'll never amount to anything, you'll never make a difference, but we serve the, the king who was born on Christmas, who came born of a virgin Mary, never sinned, but became sin for us, died in your place, rose from the dead, so that we can be made new, that the, in Christ we are a new creation, that the old is gone the old is gone the old labels are gone they have no power over you anymore the old is gone behold all things are made new you are new you may look at it and say today this looks like son of my sorrow but what's true of you today what's true of you in the present does not have to be true of you in the future it is not true of you in the future. You need to look at that and say, I call it Benjamin. This is son of my right hand. I'm calling forth the favor, the blessing, the provision, the anointing, the power of God in my life. Come on, let's bow our heads. Let's do that together. I am relabeled. I don't know what labels you're carrying with you today. I don't know what they are, but God does. And today, you need to start speaking truth, in, speaking the divine truth of God's word into your life, not the present circumstances. Not what you are even acting like right now, what you are doing right now. Knowing Christ, I am completely accepted. I don't have to chase for it anymore. It is my position in Christ. He made me acceptable. I am extremely valuable. I don't have to try to find value in the wrong places. God says I am priceless, that I am his treasured possession. I am wholly set apart for him and eternally loved. It doesn't matter what I do. I can't get away from his love. His love is unending and uncompromising for me. I am totally forgiven. No matter what, past, present, future, I am totally forgiven by God, fully cleansed, and I am fully capable to do what God has called me to do. Come on, someone needs to receive those labels. Some labels that'll set you free. Remove the false labels, the lies of the enemy. The ghosts that can no longer, they no longer have power over you. Those labels no longer have any power over you. In Jesus' name. Maybe you're here today and you want this so desperately. You want to be in Christ. You want a new label. Maybe you're walking around, I don't know what label it is, but you want a label that says, His. 
His. So if you want to be His today, if you want to be a child of God, it's so easy. You just surrender your life to Him. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's it. So with every head bowed and eye closed, I'm not going to have you come up to the front. I'm not going to single you out. I'm, I want to pray with you right where you're at to receive a new life. Like everything, past, present, future, like cleansed, forgiven, the old gone, the new come, a new creation. Today you can have that. And it's not based on what you have done. It's based on who he is. He is a forgiving God. And he wants to forgive you today and give you new life. He wants to give you a new identity today. If you've been first, if you've been walking around with the wrong labels, maybe you're a child of God, but you just got the wrong labels, can you just do something? You just lift up your hand and say, I'm relabeling myself today. Come on, child of God, I'm relabeling myself today. I'm putting on, I'm putting on, I'm putting on freedom and life. Yeah, 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 all over, yeah. Put your hands down. If you're here today and you say, I need Jesus, I want it. I want, I want to be identified in him. I want a new life. If that's you, I'm going to say a prayer for you in just a moment. I want to help you with the words. With every head bowed and eye closed, do me a favor. Lift up your hands. Lift, lift the eyes. Say, man, I need that. I need a new identity in Christ. Yeah, leave it up. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, yes. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. So proud of you, young. Yeah. Praise God. Go ahead and put your hands down. Pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, speak that name. His name is power. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Today, I surrender my life to you. I give you the control. And I receive your forgiveness. I receive your full pardon of my past, of my present, and of my future. Today, I am made new in you. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. God, I speak new identity over every person. I cast down every lie of the enemy that would diminish, devalue, hold back, and press down from the potential that they have in you, Jesus Christ. And I thank you for new labels today, freedom today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, if you receive that, give God some praise, amen. We are so thankful for all God is doing in and through your life, and we would love to continue helping you on your journey. To find out what your next steps are in your relationship with Christ, go to ilovediscovery.church forward slash next steps. At Discovery Church, it's our mission to teach people to love God passionately, love each other authentically, and change the world for the cause of Christ. And that mission drives everything we do as a church. Join us next week for Christmas at Discovery.